darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground. In the name of Jesus Christ, I greet you. Good morning. Good morning. What was that? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Craig Fitzsimmons. I am not your new pastor. I'm a pastor who's out to pasture. <laughs> and I am here to fill in. This was annual conference week. So Pastor Marcello was at a conference. And having been at conference for over 40 years myself, I know how exhausting that can be, so glad to be with you this morning as we celebrate on this Trinity Sunday. I'm glad for those who are here and those who are with us via the social media, and we look forward to sharing in this worship on this Trinity Sunday, so we are grateful for the time and welcome you to First United Methodist Church here in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. So, of course, everybody knows that Pastor Marcello is going to be leaving us, and we know that next Sunday will be his last day with us. And I bring that up because on Tuesday evening, there's going to be an administrative council meeting at 6 45 and at 7 30 there's going to be a bit of a reception to which everybody is invited say from about 7 30 to 8 30 or so and due to some conflict with scheduling this reception is going to be held at silver maple farm which is off dalton division road it will be held at the community house and what you do is, when you, if you come down Dalton Division Road from Williams Street, when you turn in, there's a sign that says Silver Maple. You turn in there, and the community house is the first building on your left. And there is parking 
in, there's a small parking lot, but there's also parking along the road very easily. So everyone is invited at 7.30 to 8.30 or so. There'll be simple refreshments, not a lot, but simple refreshments, just a time to be able to uh, say goodbye to Marcelo and his family because next Sunday he's going to be here, he's going to preach for us, but he says the car's almost going to be running outside the door. <laughs> so uh, this is an opportunity for everybody to come and greet Marcelo and to say goodbye. And I, next Sunday, of course, is his last day. I don't have any other announcements. Are there any specific? I, then let us be in the spirit of worship. So let's join in the responsive call to worship. Listen, wisdom is calling before all began. God, word, and wisdom creating, calling from the foundations of the deep. Listen. Wisdom is calling from the mountaintop, earth, field, and sea, creating calling from the foundation of the deep. Listen, wisdom is calling to those who suffer. God's love is given, endurance blossoms from the foundations of the deep. Wisdom is calling daily. Everyone, given hope, grace, love, as the foundation of our lives. Listen, wisdom is calling, poured into our hearts that we may become Christ's hand and heart, love as the foundations of our lives. Listen, wisdom is calling. broken like the first morning blackbird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for them spring Our first reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit 
will receive from me what he will make known to you. Let us pray. Oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us on this day. Amen. Reading now from the book of Proverbs in the eighth chapter. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city at the entrance. She cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before the deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the mountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day 
rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So this is Trinity Sunday. What did you get me? Right up there with Christmas and Easter, right? No. Even if you knew about it this first Sunday after Pentecost, don't expect me to stand here and try and explain the Trinity. The church has wrestled with the precise meaning of this theological concept from the very beginning. So freed from the expectations of trying to make sense of the Trinity, we can be engaged in experiencing the Trinity. That's where the doctrine comes from anyway, from our experience of God and the experience of God's people from the very beginning. He will declare to you the things that are to come, says the Gospel of John. Declare to you that the things that are to come. But certainly, life is full of surprises. All of us have gotten caught off guard from time to time. How many of us had all that transpired over these past few years in our long-range plans? Pandemic? War in Ukraine, gas prices at $5 and an all-time high, inflation, and yet another school massacre. I thought Elise and I would be doing lots of traveling together, going off to national parks and heading off on our dead president's tours. Ralph's retirement and Marcello's only being with us for a year. How many of you had that in your book of things that were going to happen in the future? None of us saw any of this coming. Well, maybe we haven't been in tune with the Holy Spirit all these years. Maybe we haven't prayed enough or listened enough. Maybe the gift of knowing was right there, but we didn't avail ourselves of it and therefore doomed to stumble around in the darkness, constantly being surprised by the turn of events that constitutes our lives. But is that what Jesus is really saying here? I'm sending you your own personal oracle, your own personal playbook to let you in on the secrets of your life. Just pay attention and there will be no more surprises? Really? I don't think so. So let's look again. The passage from John is a small part of the farewell discourse in that gospel. These are the final instructions of Jesus to his chosen followers. Some have called it cramming for the final exam, but I'm not sure that's it. It's more like a parent passing on instructions to the adolescent going off on a date. Or this speech in John sounds like parents giving instructions to the babysitter before they leave their precious treasures with some near stranger and wanting to make sure that the babysitter has the information to cover whatever contingency might arise. But that never happens anyway. 
Only in this case, the worried parent is Jesus. And the precious treasure is the world that God loves so much that God sent the Son. And the sitters are these motley crew of incompetent bunglers kind of bringing to mind those burglars in Home Alone who couldn't quite get anything right and the little boy outfoxed them. No one seems nervous, but yet Jesus goes on for three chapters. Now that's the way I see the Gospel of John. Jesus goes on and on and on and on, and just when you think he's done, he takes another breath and goes on and on and on and on again. And so he tries to leave them with instructions and launches into even more instructions all the way into chapter 14. It seems that this is the Jesus who takes time to try and help the disciples. But it isn't too long until they morph back into the incompetent bunglers that we lovingly call the church. Charged with the same task of caring for the baby that is the world sorely in need of change. But here in these verses, the speech seems to shift a little bit from instruction to promise. Oh, there'll be more instruction that's needed. Witness verse 12. There's more that I need to tell you, but your eyes are already starting to glaze over. So instead of giving them more things to put on their list, you know, bedtime and favorite toys and favorite foods and that kind of stuff, Jesus says, here's how you can reach me. Uh, wait, you said, that's not what it says there. Well, no, not exactly. You know, there's no cell phone number or texting or Facebook. So he does the next best thing. He says, I'll give you a spokesperson, a spokespresence, maybe a spoke spirit. When the spirit of truth comes, truth, and not too long ago, chapter 14 to be precise, Jesus says, I am the truth. The spirit that is me, that is of me, that speaks for me and speaks what I have spoken and would speak, will speak in the future. Here's how you can reach me, he says. I am in touch. I am within reach. Can you hear me now? That's the question of the era. The question to the church today. Can you hear him? Hear the truth? Hear his voice? And know that we are not alone. But more than that, more than just the comforting presence, the spirit, this connection, this Christ within our reach, one of our contacts, if you will, in our phone, is a spirit of truth. Tell us what it is and what will be. Declare to you the things that are to come. Wow, does that mean we can make our lottery picks now and based on the hints of the spirit? Or more realistically, can we avoid the potholes and the road of life? Well, in, the, in a word, no. It isn't a promise of prophetic powers or a glimpse into the details of a worldly future. The truth is shared in the truth about the kingdom of God. It is the truth about living together in community. It is the truth about reconciliation, about forgiveness, about grace and judgment. 
That is far more important than lottery numbers or the final four winners who are yet to come. And while it not, may not give us advance warning of circumstantial potholes in your individual and our corporate needs of life, it can give you tools for climbing your way out of whatever holes you might find yourself in and give you guidance to help you stop digging your own potholes and sabotaging yourself and those you love. The spirit that declares to you the things that are to come is the spirit that tells you the truth about yourself in such a way that you can, if you choose, course correct and reduce the chances that you're going to lose control. In other words, it's about wisdom. Someone said, wisdom is knowledge applied, or something like that. In Proverbs, however, wisdom becomes an entity. There's some debate about the nature of this entity, an aspect of God, an independent being, a creative force, a supportive presence, the feminine side of God. These verses have given commentators and biblical scholars plenty of scope for debate, much like the discussions of the nature of the Holy Spirit. I'm not brave enough to declare that the wisdom of Proverbs is indeed a reference to the Holy Spirit of John's Gospel, but certainly the lectionary preparers saw a correlation, and that's why they put these texts together. But even if we see wisdom here as what has come to be called common sense or learned knowledge to be applied, the passage suggests that there is help available. Wisdom calls, the text declares, and she offers a way to life, the life that God intends for all of us, a life of community and of connection on one level. You know, this is Trinity Sunday, a time when we celebrate and approach in three aspects, a God who is one yet experienced as three. These aspects have been given a variety of names, some to correlate to human experience. Though God is not human, some correlated functions. Though none encompass all the power of God, some correlate to relationships. To each one of the other aspects and to we who worship and approach this ultimate essence. Both gospel text and wisdom predict, depicted in Proverbs describe a God who seeks us, who connects with us, who guides and calls and shapes us. Jesus reveals that God, when he offers the disciples continued contact, even once he is no longer present with them in the flesh, wisdom cries out with the presence of God if we would but have ears to hear. God desires contact with us. God reaches toward us. God speaks. Even in our darkest hours, even in the midst of grief and horror, God gives us grace to endure to allow us to act, to reach out, to proclaim the love and peace that we can experience. We believe that. We are sustained by that, by wisdom's cry. Thanks be to God. Amen.
restore us. God, inspire us. Breath of God. Word of God. Let us pray. Holy God, three in one, we come before you this day recognizing your gift, your gift of love, your gift of peace, your gift of joy, your gift of yourself, your gift of the Spirit. We are thankful that we can gather and be your community. And so we know that we are not just gathered here and insular, but we are a gathered people to go forth to be about ministry in the world in which we live. So we come before you with heavy hearts in some places, mindful of the needs that are among us and around us. For those who are ill, we pray your comforting spirit and healing power. For those who are enduring yet another spike in COVID infections, we pray that we will all find patience and power and healing and newness. For those who are mourning this day, for those especially in Uvalde and Buffalo, but so many other places where mass shootings have taken place in the last couple of weeks, help us find some sense, help us find some courage to do what it is that we need to do to stop the violence. Lord, for the people in Ukraine who are under constant bombardment in the eastern part, we pray that somehow peace may come to them, that they may once again live in a country that is not afraid of what is coming out of the sky. Oh God, we come before you and recognize that there is much going on in our political structures and we constantly are hearing about 
what is going on for elections. We pray that you will open us up so that we can be available to knowing what it is that we can demand of those who are elected officials. We pray for a unity. We pray for commonality. And God, we pray for civility. We know that we come and have diverse views, but we know that you are the one who unites us and brings us together. And so thankfully, we give you thanks for all the blessings for those who are graduating, for those who are back to work, those who are continually finding ways to celebrate. We give you thanks for Pastor Marcello and pray that as he starts his new ministry in a couple of weeks, you will bless him and bless the church through him. God, we give you thanks for our place in your church and the part of being your people. And so as Christ has taught us, we pray together saying, Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. Amen. As God is mindful of us and our needs, let us now be mindful of our obligation to the needs of others through our giving and our responsibility of God's gifts. And the ushers will wait upon you for your offering. Mighty God, who is both one and three, we praise you as God above us, God beside us, and God within us. We bring our gifts to you in worship and gratitude as our creator and provider of all good things. We acknowledge that our relationship with you in all three persons begins and ends on your side of the equation beginning with your devotion and not our own, beginning with your wisdom and not our own. We come into relationship resting on your grace-filled love and not our intermittent efforts to be faithful in our love for you. Bless these gifts we give and bless the transformational impact they might have. In your holy name we pray. 
Amen. So go out into the world. Even if you stumble and bumble, know that you are not alone. That God has sent the power of the Holy Spirit. That wisdom is upon you. That the presence of Jesus Christ and God Almighty goes with you to reach out to those in this world who are in need and recognize that you go in love and power and grace.